Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jack. Back again to talk about the state of Discipline Priest for Dragonflight Beta, as we have just now hit beta for Dragonflight, which means the expansion announcement should hopefully be on the way. It hasn't been leaked already. And I wanted to go over the updates that have happened for Priest because they finally got our Power Word update. And with that, there's a lot of talents that have been removed outright with a number of new talents getting added into the mix. So I wanted to talk about it uh, from the perspective of healing the dungeon so far and some of the dungeon talents that I was running with and the dungeon setup that I was running with. And since we don't have raid testing yet, some of my ideas for what could happen with raid builds and where I see the spec going at the moment. Uh, previously, there was like these very sort of harsh breaks in between uh, like Holy and Discipline when it came into the Shadow Tree. Or, uh, and holy trees, I should say, when it came to the class tree that was coming up. You have the right side very, very heavily dedicated to shadow, left side very dedicated to holy, with a lot of things focusing on renew. Now, with this setup, you are sort of arcing into unfamiliar territory for discipline, as discipline is now going to have cooldowns attached to both shadow mend and power word shield, which is very, very dis disorienting for a ton of people, and I don't blame you. Uh, your primary applicators of Atonement would be Renew or Flash Heal, and Shadow Man is an ability that has a 15 second cooldown, but heals for substantially more than a standard Flash Heal would, and still applies Atonement to, to the target. With that, you're going to be able to have things like Depth of Shadows, where your dot damage is increasing the amount of healing from your Shadow Men's. And for a 5-man build, that was really good. I was finding whenever I needed to really heavily top somebody or put a lot of output into one individual person, Depth of Shadows helped out tremendously. While you also are having Shadow or Death, which is getting removed from the blacklist for Atonement. And so having an ability like Shadow or Death and the double tap that Death and Madness allows you to do, if a target is sub 20%, you hit it with a Shadow or Death, the target doesn't die, you can hit him one more time with a Shadow or Death and do quite a lot of Atonement healing out of it. So you have some very good resources on hand. Uh, notably, in the previous iteration of the class tree, it felt kind of difficult to take things like Mass Dispel or Grip, but they're a lot more prominent and it feels like you have a lot more points to be able to spend as you're going down this tree. Notably, Power Infusion, uh, Self Power Infusion, things like that are also very easy and very prominent to grab, but when it comes to the break between Holy and Shadow on this tree, Discipline kind of feels like it could straddle both of them. Holy Word Life on the bottom left, now is a threshold of 35% despite the tooltip. Uh, and it actually is a pretty meaty heal when you're healing somebody below 35%. And it makes it very easy and it's very cheap to do so. And you're not sacrificing any of your own life. After testing it in dungeons, it was harder to get people down to that threshold. But when you needed it, especially when you needed to move or when you needed to drop a quick heal on the move to somebody else, Holy Real Life was actually pretty good. So I think this is a talent that you pretty easily can afford because of some of the other things that are still kept at the bottom of this tree. Surge of Light uh, is also just going to make it easier to be able to get out a couple of quick casts out of like Flash Heal whenever you need it. Again, mobility helping uh, is always going to be nice. Mind Games, of course, is just good damage. You're able to, able to have other supports as well to reduce the cooldown of Mind Games, which helps in dungeons a lot. And Shatter Perception just is increasing the damage overall. Some very disappointing things, however, was that Crystalline Reflection does not do any Atonement healing at the moment. Uh, Lion's Inspiration is just bad. Like, this is just a bad conduit nobody took unless they had all their other Endurance conduits filled out or something like that. Then you have Fade Damage Reduction, which is now 5% damage reduction, which is also competing with Phantasm, where you can remove movement impairing effects. So you can have bad damage reduction, or you can move freely on a lot of slows and stops. Seems very unfortunate. Some positives are that you get Void Shift back. The, the negative is that you have to go through bad talents to get to it. <laughs> it's a five minute cooldown allowing you to swap health, and this is a very fun ability, a very enjoyable ability. But when it comes to survivability, Holy Word Life sort of fills that niche already for you to push somebody out of a dangerous level of health. And you also have Angelic Bulwark where you get knocked below 30%, you get an Absorb Shield. And this can happen fairly frequently every 90 seconds. So you have kind of other options on hand, but your pure defensive power feels very, very poor, even when you're gonna have something like Angel's Mercy, which would allow you to get more Desperate Prayers out in general. Uh, I don't know if it's intended or not, but Binding Heals was, applying Atonement 
for some reason, when I flash healed somebody else, which is interesting. Cool if it stays that way, but I am uh, not expecting it. They did merge Shadower Pain and Purge the Wicked into one ability. So Purge the Wicked will replace Shadower Pain, which means Throws of Pain makes sure that you have lots and lots of mana on hand, which was awesome. As we go on into the class tree here, we are seeing that uh, Pain Suppression gets moved a lot higher up onto the list. You still have things like Schism and the increased duration of Schism. You still have Shadow Covenant, which is kind of off the beaten path a little bit to the side there. So you have a couple of different options that are not too terribly intrusive. But there's a couple problems as you look at this tree. And one of which is, most notably, with a cooldown attached to Shadow Mend, you just don't have a lot of abilities to utilize Shadow Covenant. Especially if you were going to go after an extra four seconds of Shadow Covenant duration, because what it was previously is you could take the extra duration, then you could take Dark Reprimand, which is Dark Penance. But Dark Reprimand still makes your penance deal less damage, despite the Shadow Covenant buffs, and then you just don't have a lot of other abilities that are shadow-based to be able to utilize. So you're often ended up just casting nerf spells, which feels terrible. Uh, unless you're fortunate enough to be in Execute phase and you can use the double tap out of Shadow of Death, but that seems a little bit more niche to be properly working with, at least in some of the dungeons that I was doing. Uh, Rapture and is now buffing Powered Shield by 30% because they buffed the baseline version of Powered Shield, but with how all the tuning feels, Powered Shield does not feel very good at all to cast. So Rapture is okay, but it does not feel as meaty as it was prior. Exaltation would also increase the duration of Rapture and Spirit Shell, and we'll talk about Spirit Shell when we get to the raid uh, talents and raid POV. And there's just a lot of modifiers for Power of the Dark Side and Penance and extra bolts of Penance. And once you take all of these modifiers, because why not, Penance actually does feel pretty good. The Harsh Discipline, where you're able to heal for Atonement with 100 times and then be able to buff up your next Penance, make it free, make it cast additional bolts. It's a nice self-fulfilling feedback loop whenever you're in a 5-man environment. You can really easily get all your Atonements out, bump out some damage, and have a jolly old time, and it's not a problem whatsoever. Uh, for some reason, since the Many is a 2-pointer, it doesn't actually do anything, so I think that's just a mistake. Uh, but you potentially could go down that route and grab Lenience if you really wanted to. But it's sort of tucked away in a corner that you don't feel as obligated to be able to pursue. Shadowflame Prism actually does convert to Atonement Healing, although I believe it's off of only one target hit. Citation needed. But there is a number of different resources you can use for cooldown reduction for it. In this current build, Mindbender was not replacing Shadow Fiend if I, because of my Glyph, I think is what it was. So... That was a little bit of an issue, but whenever I did actually have my bender rolling out with Shadow Flame Prism at the same time, you did feel pretty reasonably strong in being able to put out a lot of healing purely just from Atonement resources. So how this really works in terms of a gameplay perspective is I worked really, really heavily to start spreading around my dots and be able to sort of benefit from the Purge the Wicked synergies that I talked about in my previous video, where whenever you cast Penance into a target Purge, you get an additional target that it's going to be spreading to, and it's dealing additional damage, and you're getting mana back when targets die, and all this other stuff. And while the mana return was good, and I never felt like I was ooming, and the buffs to Depth of Shadows, or the Shadow Mend uh, talent, where you're able to have more dot ticks increasing the healing of your Shadow Mend, those things all felt good, but at the exact same time, it felt really, really weird with a number of abilities. Uh, the supposedly buffed up Power Word Shield, having a cooldown attached to it, did not actually feel that powerful. And some of the other talents that are supposed to support it, some of them like Wheel and Woe, which are your Penance Bolts increasing either the damage of your Smite or the Absorb of your next Shield, kind of precisely zero in on the problem is that there's a number of abilities that actually just do not feel very good to cast. Uh, namely, Smite and Power Word Shield. Uh, I was expecting, or maybe hoping, with the changes that they made, that Power Word Shield would just feel really powerful every single time I cast a shield, and it would be worth the cooldown every single time. And I mean, yeah, it's worth casting, but it's not like a big step up. Um, and, and that was a bit disappointing to utilize. Shadow Men, like I said, feels better, especially a lot better than like just using Flash Heal. But same kind of story. I think I might even prefer having like a 20, 25 second cooldown on like Shadow Mend, uh, if it means that it's going to be hitting quite a bit harder. 
and I'm gonna have just a maybe more reliable like full top off on hand. Uh, as I mentioned, Holy Word Life is very much like a feast or famine. It's something that you can really heavily push somebody's health to 30-40% or add 30-40% of health to their life if they drop below the 35% threshold. But getting below there, at least in some of the dungeons we were doing since they don't have Mythic Plus yet, kind of got a bit harder to be able to deal with. Um, I didn't mess around too much with Light's Wrath in a 5-man because it was very underwhelming since you only have a limited amount of targets, but being able to get a good damage buff with Sins of the Many does seem quite important whenever you're going to be going in a 5-man. So it's sort of finding that correct balance uh, to be able to properly utilize. There's a number of other talents, some of which are like Expiation, which is increasing your Mind Blast damage and your Shadow or Death damage. That felt good for the damage buffs that they were providing to those abilities, but it felt pretty bad for consuming your dots uh, and trying to result in extra damage. That resulted in like very, very minor amounts of healing. So what I would say in the current build when it comes to Mythic Plus or Five Mans, it doesn't feel like your dots do very much damage. It doesn't feel like Smite does very much damage. And it doesn't really feel like Powered Shield is that special. I was very much hoping to have just a very powerful, beefy shield that would be able to sort of cover our bases on this one. And that didn't really seem to happen, at least not yet. Now, since we don't actually have raid testing yet available, I did want to talk about some of the things that I think could be very prominent and where I think the spec could be headed, depending on how the fights turn out and, and some of the different options that we're going to be presented with us. So as we take a look at our raid build on this one, you might notice Spirit Shell's back. And Spirit Shell had been on the tree before competing with Evangelism, but now you could potentially take Evangelism and Spirit Shell. And, as I called out in my last video, Exaltation was terrible back then, and they actually made it a lot better, increasing the duration of Spirit Shell. So, you can not only extend the duration of your atonements across the board, but you can also extend the duration of your time window, which eh, may not be a massive need and everything like that, and I'll talk about that in a second. But, just the fact is, they're adding other resources to be able to increase the value of uh, putting out a lot of mass shields and ruining everybody's day. <laughs> so I did want to call that one out. Uh, of course, you are going to be able to have the same thing as usual, shield discipline, powered solace, be able to have those options on hand. Uh, I did not think that, that the extra duration on schism was very, very good at all, because once again, smite doesn't really deal much damage going into it. You are able to kind of make that split once again with Mind Games and Holy Word Life if you need to. And while you could potentially take something like Vampiric Embrace, it's a 15 second window where all your shadow damage is actually healing another target. Problem is, this just does not have enough shadow abilities to utilize when it comes to these abilities. So it feels like this leans so much more heavily into the Holy Window than ever before. And, I mean, that's fine, you're a healer and all that other stuff, but there's a lot of potentially very cool options that you just can't quite tap into just yet as a result. And that's frustrating. You still have some dead branches, like Contrition, which are healing for just meager amounts if you're using Defensive Penance. But on the other hand, Defensive Penance is actually really strong, and they buffed it quite considerably. So in between your ramps, you could feel good about actually casting into a friendly to be able to top them off, whether it's raised, whether it's mythic plus. Some of the big positives obviously were Light's Wrath, but they got rid of the talent Inner Light and Shadow, which kind of had like a stance dance feel to it. And instead they replaced it with something I think is a lot more interesting. It's balance in all things, where your shadow spells, if you hit with a shadow spell, it'll increase the damage of your next holy spell cast within six seconds by 15%. And then when you cast a holy spell, it'll buff up your next shadow spell. And you can kind of set up a ramp almost where you schism into a Light's Wrath, into a Mind Games, into a Penance, into a Mind Blast, into Smite or whatever it is that you have left over. When you alternate between schism, a shadow spell, Light's Wrath, a radiant spell, which is light and fire, into a shadow spell again, into a holy spell again, and back and forth you go. And I would love this. Uh, it was not quite properly working whenever I tested it on uh, the servers and everything today, but a number of things are kind of busted. 
But that being said, I love this as a concept to be able to flip between light and shadow when dealing damage and actually properly feeling the increased value and the increased um, pump and power and everything that you have on hand. Notably, there's also some other talents that are buffing up Light's Wrath, where you're getting 4% more damage per ally affected by Atonement. Originally, it's 10% more damage, so I would bump it up to 14. But then there is Wrath Unleashed, and this ties again into some of the other problems I was mentioning, where it's buffing up your smite damage by 40%, whoa, after casting Light's Wrath. But 40% of a small number is not a lot, unfortunately. Previously, we had uh, smite buffs rolled into the class tree, and I think there was another one rolled into the discipline tree in the previous build, where if you had a X atonements out, I think it was like three atonements out, your smite would do like 10 or 20% more damage or healing or something like that. Now, without a lot of those modifiers, and even before when they had them, smite just felt terrible to utilize, and these talents buffing it don't really help a lot. The reduced cast time and crit strike chance is uh, okay, but I think that there's a lot of competition that's going on here. Uh, whether or not you take Spirit Shell or you start going into this far left side, this far left branch is probably the most strange one that I've experienced. And again, it just cycles back to what feels good to cast. So you can get cooldown reduction for Powered Shield or cooldown reduction for Penance, but those don't really feel great to cast on their own unless they're heavily modified or heavily buffed. You know, if you're dealing damage with Penance, you get it in Tome Duration. That's okay. Or when... You, but it's just a Tome on yourself. Which is not always going to be something that you need to be able to maintain a Tome on yourself for a long time. It's not like it's extending the duration of a Tome on the lowest duration target out there or something along those lines. So it's preventing Atonements from falling off. It's completely different. Uh, or when your Penance is healing, the duration of the Atonement on that target's increased. Again, I don't know, maybe a five-man sort of idea, but there's a lot of better competition for five-mans like Shadow Flame Prism that are just way heavily uh, overlap that and overshadow that, right? Now, you do have Divine Aegis once you get past that question mark of a talent choice, where you're able to go up to 30% of the amount that was healed from crit strikes, creating absorbs. This is freaking amazing. If you're going to be running with something like Evangelism where it's actually pure healing, Making extra absorbs after the fact seems incredible. That being said, if you're able to increase everybody's maximum health before a damage event actually hits the raid, that's quite a bit better than just having shields after the fact. Although, you could argue one way or another, depending on fight timers, but generally, you increase everybody's health beforehand and let everybody else worry about the raw healing, and Disc has always been able to make its bread that way and do very, very well. That said, this feels like an N-tier talent choice because the next option is, oh, Atonement's granted by shield last three seconds. Well, shield's got a cooldown. So you're only getting out one or maybe two over the course of a ramp. It doesn't really make much sense. Or something like Divine Age is being used in a five-man environment, creating small shields after your crits. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. And you have this Aegis of Wrath talent where you have... 30% additional damage getting absorbed from your shield, but the absorb amount decays over time. Well, that's fine if your tank's getting brutalized, but why would you go through all these other talents just to take Aegis of Wrath? Overall, I think that the bones, when you start looking at the Discipline Tree, they're really good. There's a lot of good things out there. I love playing around with Shadow Flame Prism. The cooldown reduction on hand for Fiend or Bender feels great. I think that Light's Wrath return and the additional support that it gets feels great. Balance in all things, that is a lovely concept. They really should delete Spirit Shell. I don't think anybody would mind, like, please, Blizzard, delete Spirit Shell. Why are we having it and Evangelism on hand? Like, we know what's going to happen. We know what we're going to do to all the other healers. We know how well fights are going to get us into one-shot range very early on in tiers. We don't need to go down that path again. It's... I haven't played the game for like eight, nine years. Something like that. I've, I've seen all of that happen again and again. And nobody's happy when they have to experience that. So please, let's not go down that path. I felt restricted on the disc tree. And I felt like I had a lot of open season. And a lot of open options where I could be taking grip even though I may not need it. Mass dispel even though I may not need it. 
Same thing with Holy Nova, if I'm not even gonna use it in a raid or something like that, I felt like I wasn't really giving up a lot because I don't have enough shadow spells for Vamp and Brace. Uh, I don't think I really get a lot of value in creating a Void Shield for myself to increase my survivability, although I was like forced to take it because I kinda had to. Uh, you have other weird things like Mind Blast giving movement slows, but you have to take other abilities to even get there. Lots of weird things going on. The damage reduction from Translucent Image is even worse than we experienced in Shadowlands, so that makes our survivability really difficult. And overall, like I said, there's a lot of good bones to this tree, and there's a lot of good things that they've given us, but there's also just a, a number of question marks that are tossed in there and need a lot more attention and iteration. For me personally, I am fine if they get rid of Shadow Covenant. I think that their experiment with Shadow Covenant over the years has proven that they don't know how to properly be able to craft this ability, and it's fine to just give up on it. Honestly, I'm, I'm just tired of having to look at it every single expansion and see another iteration that will test and then ultimately ignore later on. Shadow or Death being able to be part of the Execute and part of your Execute ramp is amazing and I love it. Being able to alternate it with Balance in All Things is another example. What is going to feel incredible where you might be able to double tap Shadow or Death immediately, but you would otherwise delay it to be able to get more damage by benefiting from this passive is going to be freaking amazing to be able to play around with. And overall, I am like hopeful for the spec. I think that there's a lot of good ways the spec can continue to contribute damage and heal that way in a five man. I think that their ramp capabilities are becoming a lot more interesting, but when it comes to their bread and butter, I think what felt really good in Legion about Disc was how bursty and powerful you felt when you had Light's Wrath at your side, how strong of power shields that you were able to put out. What felt good in BFA was how impactful it was having lots of smite follow through in your atonement ramps and how if you focused on getting every last bit of value out of your atonements by maintaining a lot of smite damage you would be heavily rewarded for it that being said in vfa penance felt terrible and at one point it was not even worth casting compared to just more smite so they do need to do a better job i think of making our baseline abilities feel like they hit very hard even if it costs us a bit of damage from like Light's Wrath or Mind Games or something like that, because the spec is built off the back of Burst, but I think there's so many ways that the spec could just be able to provide a steadier amount of damage over the course of encounters, particularly in supporting tank, uh, tank healing and even just priority targets, where you're doing more than just a tiny trickle in between your ramps and then doing overwhelming shields all over the place and stopping anybody else from having any fun. We don't need to have such a polarizing setup going into Dragonflight because we've already been there and we know it's not that interesting. And it's fun for a little while and it's fun to top the meters. It's fun to be the coveted raid spot and everything, but it also just kind of soils the rest of the healer experience and it's very oppressive. And then when you get into farm content, you're also locked into playing that because everyone's used to having such crazy effective health that they like to stand in everything. Because don't they always? Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are of the disc tree. I've got full VODs and everything like that of our runs in Dragonflight Beta Dungeons linked in the description below if you want to check out the live stream. And be sure to join in on Discord for our Dragonflight Alpha Discussion Channel or Beta Discussion Channel now as we're sharing some different builds and sharing some different ideas because these builds are obviously not the end-all be-all. There's going to be so much iteration and we'll be covering all of it. Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it and I'll catch you all next time.